Hey, it's Chris. That's right, it's that time. And you thought doing a news video every week, I would run out of stuff? Well, just kidding, folks. We are trying to digest, ooh, look at that pun there, the Game Found Feast this week. Bunch of new games announced, a bunch of familiar faces with a little bit of a different spin. And a little bit of a follow-up from last week because I speculated a little bit and maybe I was right, question mark? Yeah, your boy was right. Let's do this. So you go over to GameFound right now and you're like, hey, what's crowdfunding right now? No, GameFound doesn't care what's crowdfunding right now because they just announced all the upcoming stuff. So repeat, exaggerate the cycle of hotness and hype, right? You can't even get excited about the stuff that you're gonna get in a year and a half. You need to be thinking about the stuff that hasn't even launched yet this year that you can get in two to two and a half years. That's why you can be excited about this, right? You can FOMO even earlier than usual. Yeah, he's hyped up for this video, folks. If you didn't think this wasn't gonna be a good one, well, you don't know me. So game found, email, live stream, whatever, right? They said feast, 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 or famine. Okay, okay, let's go into it, right? Let's go into it. Because, you know, if you pull up that page, I wasn't kidding, right? You go over there and they're like, here are all the featured ones, none of which are currently funding then they're, I mean, they're preempting even like Roth on there and Dungeons and Lasers, which has raised 1.1 freaking million dollars. So if you're going over that page, like unless you're one of the big ones, you, you kind of get shoved to the side. I hate to say that. They only show six campaigns that are currently funding on the main page. And you know, that's cool and all, but this was supposed to be like wider for everybody, not just wider for the top. And that's been my main criticism, and it will continue to be my main criticism until I see them really give some more focus to that. And I understand it. It's a business bottom line thing, right? But it's supposed to be better for the hobby, not just the rich getting richer either from that side of things. So let's go. What's the first one up? Go on board. You may be familiar with them from The Witcher or The Witcher, as I smack my microphone. But now... <laughs> We're getting a Cyberpunk 2077 game, right? Cool, freaking right, right? Wait, wait, what? Didn't we literally just see that recently delivered from CMOD as an area control game? Uh, yeah, we, we, we did. So how is this gonna be any different? The description of teaming up with iconic characters, take jobs, reward with stuff, street cred, adrenaline, make it to the major leagues of Night City, become a legend. How is this gonna be any different? How is this different? And again, like none of these pages have significantly any information that's gonna help you at all whatsoever, folks. So you can go over to GameFound, I can show you them, and they're gonna have pretty pictures and teaser videos that offer you absolutely zero amount of um, actual informative information, but that's okay, I guess. You know, it's gonna be miniatures. Okay, okay, okay. Do you need another game of this? How does this compare? Is this like uh, the Simon Modifus side of, uh, what was it, uh, Masters of the Universe? Is that gonna be that? Is it gonna be two takes on the same thing with this very similar overlapping Venn diagram genre? No freaking clue, but that's first right now. Bad Crow Games, Avatar, The Journey of Ang, which weirdly enough, weirdly enough, over on Board Game Geek at the time of me filming this, there was a very similarly titled game coming out from the OP, which is a remake of Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, which was The Last Airbender, Ang's Destiny. Now we're seeing The Journey of Ang. Now, thankfully, this page has a little bit more information? Question mark has a picture of the board and some cards but you want actual content again? Nope, no dice, no no challenge, no nothing whatsoever. But two-sided main adventure board, player tokens, 10 of each elemental dice and eight avatar dice, and a bunch of cards, like about 100, 115 cards or so, they say. I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, 30 to 60 minutes though, age is eight plus. So Bad Crow, cooperative tableau, dice building adventure game. <laughs> I don't know. Good family game. My kids are in love with that. But is it going to be applicable to someone like myself who's playing with all of these groups beyond just my family? You know, 
That's going to be my main question. I just slotted Dinos Riding Dodos. Dodo Dash. Dinos Riding Dodos. Dodos Riding Dinos. I always mess that up. Dinos Riding Dodos. Now, wouldn't that be interesting, right? But that's the question with this one. Is it going to be applicable for my game group, my wife and I? Or is it just going to be more of a kid-friendly thing? Bad Crow, show me what you got. Now, if you're not familiar with them, Company of Heroes was their other big one. So, right? <laughs> Talk about dichotomous, uh, whoosh. But I don't care. I want to see what they can do. I'm, I'm all over it. I'd love to see what they can do from that aspect of things. So, that's awesome. Next up, well, an another standout from one of the solo player games of the past year or two. Sky Tier, Sky Tier Horde. It's getting a campaign standalone expansion. Solo, cooperative, and card battling in the sense of a TCG minus the TCG. One offs, new mini campaign, three collected campaigns in the style of a roguelite. So there's more information on their page, and they have a well established product, so you know what you're getting from them. And I covered the first time around, I didn't cover the second time around, and I'd really be interested in covering all three of these games so far to kind of see my own aperitif my own tasting sampler right i'm sorry i can't stop it's the game found feast folks right so at least with uh, sky tier you know you're gonna get a little promo pack as the you know thing you're getting early here but there's enough information out there that you either know that you like sky tier horde or this isn't going to change your mind so i wouldn't look at that one as necessarily being any different in that sense and now we're going over another one, which I have a copy of. I just got it yesterday. Um, Mindbug Battlefruits, the next in the line of expansions for Mindbug. And I'll have a video out for this one um, upcoming in the near future. And I'll say on that video, just like I'll say on this video, Mindbug, when I played it initially, I was like, well, this is kind of clever. It's okay. And I played it more. I played it a little bit more. And now I, I really kind of like it. It's clever in a chaotic, neutral, agent of chaos style of things, right? Someone else just stole my catchphrase on, you know, when I was looking up at, at you know, crowdfunding pages today. I think it was Brotherwise. I think they put a quote on there like, chaotic, whatever. And I was like, hey, that's my tagline recently. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, it's a two-player dueler, right? You have these little mind bugs and you play out your cards and you just attack people. And you have a little mind bug that you can flip over and steal another person's creature twice per game. And they're just going to give you more crazy combinations. Take that and just, you know, you use only a limited cards, uh, sort of Res Arcana style where you get what you get and you, you make the best out of it, right? You make kiwi salad out of kiwi. Yeah, I'm, I went there. Deal with it in the comment section down below. Crazy fruit analogies. We're not making apple pie out of apples or lemonade out of lemons on this channel. You're freaking knowing what you're getting and it's going to be kiwis today. Uh going to make another bad bad pun there of a different fruit that has um and anyway getting sidetracked here so I expect more goodness from them if you liked it it's going to be more if you didn't like it, it's not going to probably change your mind star driven gateway though I, from rock manor i covered this uh back on my upcoming anticipated games of 2024 at the tail end of 2023 and i honestly i think i put this one on the retail side of things because there was next to no information from rock manor there wasn't even a picture on the board game geek page and now we're getting one to 30 minutes per player <laughs> competitive that's going to be in the outtakes cooperative solo episodic sci-fi universe you choose your faction your crew and you station your ship and complete missions so kind of vibing of like moonrakers but no actual mechanistic approach or what's going to be entailed with that as a whole so i mean could be freaking sweet uh, there's miniatures on the page though which makes me a little bit trepidatious for a potentially card driven scenario quest driven game so i love the faction side of things but i have no idea what it's going to be uh, unique flexible scenarios allowing you to drop in or out competitive episodes unique rules cooperative scenarios as well managing your own starship so maybe a little bit of light drive-esque if you're familiar with that video game or that app you know, it gives me maybe more a little bit of those vibes. And, you know, Rock Manor puts out a solid product. So we'll kind of see where it goes from that aspect. The other one that I literally, literally announced on the review, the review, the news video last week was Odolin from Dragori. I, you heard it here first. I said, here comes Odolin, open world from Teneris and Arena. This is what you're going to get. And now it's going to be over on Game Found the Feast. And I didn't know it was going to be over there. You know, dungeon crawler, great strategic depth, dark desert fantasy setting. Um, yeah, 
I won't lie. I reached out to them. I was never able to cover Tenaris and just never worked out for some reason. And again, freaking looking awesome miniatures on the page, but you're going to get unlocks. They're going for it even right now. So if you go over to the page and you want to follow on their page, 5,000 followers will get you another loot kit already. So dark fantasy, I'm again, I'm intrigued. Sort of like a dark tales of Arabian nights, if you will, only with like demons. <laughs> so we'll see ever changing dungeons, different layout decisions, uh, quests. Again, it's got a cool vibe. They put out a solid product. So this is one that I probably is going to shoot up my list of anticipated crowdfunding campaigns now uh, between now and the end of the year. The, the tricky part with all of these, right, uh, apart from really only having some renders of miniatures on most of these pages, is that one, they all seem to be heavy miniature focus, except for Mindbug. And then two, there's no date on any of this as well. So uh, you could imagine probably one or two of these will launch in the next month. And you could imagine some of these might be later in quarter two, is what I would guess. Because knowing how GameFound sort of announces these things, it's really by a quarter by quarter situation. And that's what I'd expect, probably sometime in the next quarter. And what I mean by that is the next three months not the like the quarter one or quarter two specifically so that's what i would kind of go off of from those aspects of things uh the other ones that were announced that aren't as quite prevalent well just kidding i'm just kidding i you know i completely forgot about this one with the literal launch of uh simon's second campaign of the year so far in march second campaign of the year so far in march just doing the math here right we now have another announcement because that was already on my news list that was going to be announced this week regardless, but now it was included in the Game Found Feast of Simon's third campaign, and we already know of the fourth campaign of Degenesis Wars. We know that there's going to be an alluded, or there was an alluded to DC, you know, United situation on the end of one of the other previous campaigns from last year, is Gods of War. Is God of War. And another God of War game. Only this is going to be one, check this out, two players one or two interesting dynamic player count that they have not gone to and it lives me a little bit more like chip theory-esque but it's going to be a cooperative dungeon crawl so it reminds me of the other one that was just that that huge box that was just delivered uh the one player mainly solo driven open world campaign that had all of the content creators um drooling all over it that had a couple best of lists for 2023 i'm completely blanking on that one i'll probably flash it over my face here and you'll know what the one i'm talking about i go fill in the blank right uh but you're going over a series of adventures between gods of war and god of war ragnarok as well bad stuff happens in midgard is this one going to be launching in april is this one going to be launching you know every six weeks or so because that's what they're going for at this point there's again renders special action card mentions quests are puzzles distinct objectives uh security so it gives me sort of a scenario based objective vibe where it's not really like smash bash crash and zombie side but it's like okay go there do this more like haha the previously mentioned arena or tenaris so it gives me that and you're going to select one quest out of eight they say along with monsters and a final boss so based on that description you maybe may think it's more like Cthulhu Death May Die, which as a one to two player game only. It's probably the most likely of me backing any of them because Deep Keep or Dead Keep, uh, as you know, I guess you want to call it, depending on uh, what you're concerned about from either the Deep Keep from the money book, digging into your wallet side of things, or the Dead Keep as in uh, dead on arrival. Just kidding. I'm being totally facetious. Dead as in zombies and, you know, the undead. Um, it appeals to me more than any of the other ones so far, except for DC United. DC United, I will just throw money at the screen for, and I'll videotape it, and you guys can see it on the channel as an outtake. By the way, if you missed uh, one of the videos from earlier this week on the Don't Buy It at Retail, go check out the end of that video. It has one of the best outtakes I've ever done. I'm including the outtakes and the, you know, the edited stuff sometimes now at the end of the videos in case you weren't aware. So if you don't tune into the end, you're missing some funny things of me looking like I'm having a stroke on camera with like the stuttering and the re repeating and the messing up the words and all that sort of thing so um in case you were wondering about that that's freaking awesome but i mean that's an interesting player count right let's go back to the topic at hand epic fights puzzles uh, how do you feel about that from a one to two player standpoint again like chip theory right so i guess so i, I guess i'm interested i guess i'm intrigued I, I don't know what else to think of it from that side of things 
So we'll kind of see where it goes. I mean, it's got probably the biggest pedigree name, arguably probably even bigger than Cyberpunk. Arguably, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of hard to gauge. I'm not really on the video game seat of things, but it could easily be surpassed from that. Flanix is bringing us back Hannibal and Hamilcar, only they're coming back with metal miniatures as well with this remake. So, I don't know. Flanix uh, just had one, I think, fund over on... Wasn't there one over on crowdfunding earlier this year? Was it was it GameFound or was it Kickstarter? I'm completely blanking. Um but this is a 2018 war game that recreates the Punic Wars. Now you can get them together. Okay. Minis aren't gone, but you can get them as an add-on and metal. I, I don't know. I'm not a war gamer. Is this a really well thought of game? I guess it is. When we skim over to Board Game Geek and we see that it's got an 8.3 rating with 1,700 ratings. And it's the 8, 18th ranked war game. So never mind. Just kidding. People are going to be all over this. Uh, it's in the top board game week 1000 20th anniversary edition uh, though of the original Hannibal Rome versus Carthage which was asymmetric card driven so I mean if it's an asymmetric original card driven game if this is I'm, I'm looking at the right thing right I'm probably just screwing this up but asymmetrical card driven game can you matter like uh, can you imagine like a Kinesia with like battle line and all of a sudden battle line was like here let's throw some miniatures on top of it or Res Arcana. Can you imagine Res Arcana with miniatures? Right, That's what I imagine this as. I'm completely screwing this up, but you know where I'm going with this. Uh, now, next up from Quinn Games. Never heard of this one. Stupor Mundi. And from the designer of Darwin's Journey, Newton and Autobahn, you're taking on Frederick II's vassals, where you're summoning allies into the Mediterranean, building your own castle. That's kind of cool. And promoting specialists to improve your kingdom through a clever card mechanistic approach. Select your actions, trigger edicts, get rewarded. So again, miniatures. It's going to have a 3D element of castles here. Exclusive allies and a mini expansion for following. So I have no idea. Like I'm tempted to reach out to them because I have no idea about this game whatsoever. Deck building action system. I mean, there's a board game geek entry for it. And it's got 76 ratings, so I'm not really aware. Did this like previously crowdfund? Uh, it looked like it may have, and now it's a launching. This one actually has a date for May 7. So I'd like to try that. If you've got like a deck building aspect, now they're just adding like a 3D element here with the tech tree, hand management, and action events to go along with it. So it's something interesting, something I've never heard of, something I would be intrigued by but it plays anywhere between an hour and a half and three hours. And it looks quite different than the Board Game Geek page. So this is like a significant upgrade, I guess. Interesting, 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 interesting. And they say it's a new strategy game and it's part of their Master Print series, whatever that means. So I'm assuming that this is the same game that I'm looking at on Board Game Geek at the time of me filming this, but, um, they are definitely looking different. And so maybe that's just based off of Board Game Arena picture. Maybe that's what it is. And maybe that's why it's completely different. But anyway, check that one out too. Now, the other one that is really intriguing to me, Historica Arcanum, Cults of London. Hybrid deck builder, right, 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 right hear me out. Take control of occult cabals vying for control of Victorian era London. Okay, okay. It's got some kind of cool, dark-looking lore art. I'll unalign the stars, burn the empire, right? Game of espionage, cutthroat horror, two to four players, 90 minutes, asymmetric deck builder. Okay, freaking got me on asymmetric deck builder when I get to be a spell slinger, a scoundrel, and a hero all in one. Freaking awesome. So quarter two on that page. Again, slight date there when some of these other ones don't have anything whatsoever. But again, no actual information on anything further than that. But color me intrigued, Mr. Burns. So that is also going. And then last up, last stop, Leviathan Wilds. Um, yeah, Mooncrab Games, porting over to GameFound. Uh, second time around, I believe they funded quite well. And this is your Shadows of Colossus board game. And this is a second printing with an expansion. Solo, co-op, and hmm, 
more content. So it reminds me of the other pseudo uh, Shadows of Colossus game as well, the one with the little meeples, uh, the one versus one one. So I like the fact that this is more cooperative and I think it's gonna be relatively well received. I said this one was a sleeper hit. It was a little bit more expensive than I expected initially, even as an indie design game on crowdfunding. But I also said, I really like the Spiral Bomb Notebook. I like the mechanistic approach. The shuffle build your deck climb with meeples going across the pictures. It just looks solid. So the first one is gonna be fulfilling at the time of uh, very shortly after this. So I would imagine that if they're playing their cards right, we're gonna see this one probably potentially sooner than a lot of the other ones that we've already talked about because, right? Bam, 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 bam. That's me striking while the iron is hot, right? And so I would imagine you do that here. Assuming, you know, you hit it out of the park like I imagine they're going to. So there you go. Like game found feasting. Chum, 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 chum. What are you most interested out of those? Do any of those intrigue you? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. One or two right there. Right there. I'm all over. So. Um, I may have to go back and edit my upcoming crowdfunding campaigns that I'm most interested in. I was going to have that video out this past week and it got preempted by uh, Dying Light, the mini reviews for All Plays, River Valley Glassworks, and uh, the other one for the Don't Buy at the Retail. So that one will be coming out this coming week. And so you'll see where my thoughts are on the upcoming ones. And I'll probably have to add a couple of these just because now, right? At least as honorable mentions or be awares more than anything else. Not part of the game found feast, but the other more recent announcement as we stay with the upcoming crowdfunding announcement games uh, from Lunar Oak Studios, the people who bought you Sheol, S-H-E-O-L, with the periods behind it. Their next game is Solus, one to five player cooperative sci-fi world of immortals where players are agents of a futuristic SWAT team and you're taking stuff out, right? Who doesn't want to be taking stuff out like a futuristic SWAT team? Uh, they've already said that, you know, they put out like an update actually, cause I'm following the, I believe game found page today at the time of me filming this, that people were already up in arms, raging their pitchforks and, you know, shoving their torches, you know, at places, stuff and things you shouldn't about the fact that they had some AI art on the page and people were like, well, I don't like that. And they're like, Hey guys, it's a little bit of placeholder you know, you can't always afford to pay all the art beforehand. If you don't know that like art is one of the most expensive aspects of a crowdfunding campaign, if you're paying for a ton of art. And so I don't really care if people are using AI art as placeholders who freaking cares, right? Unless you're one of those people who's only buying the game for aesthetic purposes and you don't know what it's going to look like inertially. And if you're only buying it for aesthetic purposes, I mean, you have a lot more cash than I do then. But they've said that they're going to hire and redo it. So I put my trust in their honesty in that sense. So again, it's going to be probably heavy miniature based like a lot of these ones we just talked about. And if it's anything like Sheol, I mean, again, you're going to be talking a couple hundred thousand dollars needed to get it printed. And you're probably going to be talking a couple hundred dollars even to get a copy of it. So how does that make you feel? So that's interesting. Um, then we also have the upcoming finally announced, as I alluded to previously, Star Wars Unlimited, which has now finally made its way to the scalpers and sold out most of the booster boxes online everywhere. Because people are like, hey, I think I can flip it. Now you just have tons of it being flipped or trying to be flipped. So we'll see how well that works. It pisses me off because I can't get any more, even though my unboxing video will come this upcoming week and you can see how awesome it went. Um, because I know you guys like those unboxing videos, right? Those might be a new staple on the channel just because uh, you can hear me anyway, do something slightly different as a whole. But um, I have a few thoughts on those as a whole side tangent too, but we're not going to get into that in this video. I've already rambled on enough. What they've announced is that July appears to be the release of the second wave of content called Shadows of the Galaxy. And um, I'm intrigued. I kind of love it. I kind of am speculating. I'm not a big speculator. I spent a little bit more money than I probably should have and not nearly as much as I probably should have at the same time because I didn't get one of those fancy showcases and I only have about two good decks that I can make. Although I think I'm going to sell a couple cards and make back uh, at least a box or a booster box's worth of money with two or three cards. So, I, you know, is it really that much of a loss? No, not really, because 
I'd argue that some of the Kickstarters I get, like ISS Vanguard, are going to see a lot less player attention right now, or Mythic Battles Ragnarok that we just talked about this past week or so, than this one is. And that's a win ready, <laughs> right? Uh, getting it played. So I'm going to try and do some local stuff too. It's just really hard timing-wise with family. Like, they're either like week nights for like five hours. Who has time? You know, work for eight hours. I try and work out most, you know, five days a week get home, have some family time, and then, like, you want me to go play at, like, 6 or 6.30 already for, like, five hours of a, a, you know, style tournament, you know, playing four rounds? I just can't. And you're going to give me, like, a booster, one booster pack, depending on how I do, like, for, like, a $6 entry and five hours of my time? Like, I can spend five hours doing this and make, like, $7.50 and almost buy two boosters for that price. You guys think I'm joking, but I'm not actually joking, because that's probably how, about how much I make an hour, right? Um, which reminds me, GoFundMe? Should I do the GoFundMe? You can pay for my Star Wars Unlimited, or a better camera, or a better computer to actually get myself a uh, high res, or an overhead light if you missed my dying light video, which just needs more light overhead too. I don't know, or whatever. Anyway, I'm going to probably go in. I'm probably going to stay with it right now. Cause I like, I like it. I, I I think the art's awesome and I just like it. And you're going to see more biased opinion on it from me. I'll probably do a review sometime in the near future too. Just talking about the pros and the cons and everything else in between. And um, maybe FFG will answer one of my desperate emails, but I doubt it. They're too big, right? Like they go with the people that are not me. <laughs> okay. Next up. So what else is new? Well, we're getting another wave of, <gasps> Speaking of Star Wars crack, uh, we have Disney crack, and that is in the form of Lorcana, Illumineer's Quest, the next edition of them as Deep Trouble, where you now, this is the weird twist spin, right? Cooperative. Lorcana is going a cooperative mode. You're going to be going up against Ursula, or Ursula deck with four difficulties that is provided to you, and you can play with anywhere from one of the two decks that's going to be provided in this $60 buy-in to incorporate it or you can build your own and use your own for up to four players how do you feel about that i don't really know how i feel about it so eh, take that for what you will lorcana crack is still going strong i mean the star wars destiny scalpers are going all over the place so lorcana is apparently even worse because disney disney fanboys and disney scalpers are you know apparently eh. So that's going on. And then also trolling some of the Board Game Geek forums earlier this evening. Evenfall, which I talked about uh, earlier in the week as one of the games I thought was maybe going to be wide, more widely released this month, which maybe not actually, maybe somewhere with June release. So I may have screwed that up. You know, may have called up. But there's already talks from the designer about an expansion on Tabletopia and, you know, getting it some playtesting. So you might see a release of an expansion for that game already by the year's end. Wouldn't that be crazy, right? Essen release for its expansion a year after its Essen release. So, mm, I don't know. I haven't got a chance to play. Someone's selling on Borgen Beak Market. I almost picked it up tonight. I was like, well, I can buy that or I can buy another box of Star Wars Unlimited. <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm sorry. Uh, and then also there is uh, rumors of a reprint for Fortune and Glory, that game, in a smaller box though. And this is a classic 2011 game, you know, that's just outside the Board Game Geek Top 1000. So fast paced, high adventure, cliffhanger, pulp action, movie simulator, essentially, if you will. Cooperative, dice rolling, push your luck, and relatively well received for what it is. And it's got cooperative play, competitive play, numerous amounts of expansions originally from flying frog productions and just kidding about the rumored thing because it's actually av available for pre-order on flying frog productions official web shop for a hundred dollars and it says that the estimated retail price is going to be 170 dollars now this is a revised edition it says with the base game a print signed by members and members of the cast a 3d thermal plastic skull tokens that are painted limited edition logo magnet and four promo cards now interesting enough it says it's fully compatible with previous expansions uh but i don't really think it comes with any so for a hundred dollars are you willing to get in on that and you're just trying to collect 15 fortune uh as the competitive game and you're trying to collectively 
uh, be a vile organization in the game itself if you go up against it in a cooperative sense, which I guess is a good price. There's a first edition, a couple available around the $100 price on Board Game Geek. So is that something that you're interested in? I mean, there's one available at 100 I guess I should say. There's a couple at 150 as well. Is that a grail game for you? I knew of it. I never clamored for it. Uh, again, it'd be a try before I buy more than anything else, especially at that price point. But if you're interested, I guess we're going to see more of it as well. So there you go. So what's coming up in crowdfunding this week? The upcoming crowdfunding games, by far and away the biggest. This is a bit of a lull, unless we have a couple surprises coming. Uh, the biggest one of all of them is Mythwind. The Mythwind reprint with expansion content is launching on Tuesday. How did you feel about this game? Was this one of the ones that you said, okay, I'm really interested in it? Or was it one of those that you were kind of like, okay, right? This is a Zen-like game and Open Owl Studios sort of has that vibe, cooperative, they call it cozy, uh, open world, open-ended, no distinct co conclusion style of things. I mean, I feel like it's a love it or hate it and not necessarily that. I feel like it's more like a better description of it would be hot or cold, right? You're either hot for it and this is totally your jam and your vibe or it's just kind of cold. Like I got to play a prototype at the campaign and I said, I see the mechanics. I see what you're doing. It's different. It's not for me. Like they even sent out uh, requests for review copies, right? And I said, no, thanks. You know, because that would be an easy review. Like some of these games, right? Like folks, like sometimes I turn stuff down because I'm just like, hey, it's not me at all. And I don't want to, you know, have them send me something in that regard. Um, the only things I want sent to me in that sense is sense stuff that I'm interested in. So Again, we're going to see. I mean, it did gangbusters the first time around, and uh, I would imagine it will do very similarly with this one. So I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever in that regard. The other one that was supposed to launch this week got delayed. Good thing, though, to give plenty of time for people like me who are always behind more time to do it uh, was Bitewings Trio games that I talked about. Uh, then you have the Cat Blues and the Bebop game that I'm going to be talking about in a video here in the next week or two, but that got delayed until the second week of April. Kind of one that's on my radar is Heroes of the Sanctum, the strategy card game, which kind of uh, aesthetically gives a vibe of like a Warhammer 40k style of things. Uh, quest portable based solo co-op adventure, dark post-apocalyptic fantasy, right? and you draw cards that provide you with action points, effects, and actions that are available, and you assign them to double-sided hero tokens. So how do you kind of go from there? Well, we'll see. I mean, you know, FireTap Games here is a new company, and we're gonna see what their situation and what their sort of outlook is at this point. They've got nearly a thousand people following on the Kickstarter preview page, and I mean, again, like this is sort of my vibe, right? If you give me something really, really interesting here and something that is, you know, cooperative, right? I mean, that's, that's what I like talking about. So I'm going to be intrigued to see what this one does on the page when it launches. And you'll know I'll cover it in the roundup next week as well. And then the last one I, on crowdfunding here, AI Apocalypse, uh, one to eight player decision making strategic decks with a sort of simultaneous action selection battle phase with asymmetric units and going up trying to be the last survivor as well 200 plus playing cards i'll have a video out at the beginning of the week for that one apart from that i mean that's kind of about it i mean there's one or two other small ones that are on my radar but nothing else uh that was really you know overwhelmingly needing to be brought up at this point so you know time management here hotness hotness agemonia agemonia french publisher right and so that's the next of the dungeon crawls, uh, narrative-based dungeon crawls with a different action selection system than all the rest. It's got the hotness, it's got the clicks, it's getting delivered. So what's going on from that standpoint? Because right behind it is another more recently delivered one, but we'll get to that in a second. And because Agemonia with its 230 ratings has a nine rating on Board Game Geek. Does that make you super interested now? Again, small sample size, incredibly small sample size, and it's incredibly niche within a niche within a niche. If you bought this game in the first place, right, you're predisposed to liking it. And so that's the issue with crowdfunding, just like it is with retail. But this is a heavier one because it is a weight of over three. So that's a little bit more extensive. It's a little bit more overhead as well, but a fully cooperative moral choice based storyline system, living your destiny on a scenario map, triggering the surroundings and using ability checks in the form of might, agility, and will by rolling dice and spending your stamina, also with combat, which is similarly dice-based. Fixed value, there you go. Crowdfunding did well. 
A few copies selling above market value as well on Board Game Geek. So if that's of interest, you can check that one out. And speaking of things along those lines, more of a miniature based one in the one to four player, one to two hour Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Also delivering also with a tremendous rating of eight with 300 ratings. So, uh, you know, again, if people are getting away from ratings or just what is the divide there? Who rates what? Why do they rate what? different scenarios different victory conditions head-to-head -head strategy adventure game for well you know it says five it says four players on the listing but that's with the expansion i believe because the original is only one to three which again i said it during the crowdfunding campaign too uh from archon which is a very strange player count so represented by map tiles individual tiles and hexagonal format differing between the battles and the overworld I have no idea. I haven't seen really a whole lot of conversation about it. I haven't seen any big channels cover it yet. And there's not a whole lot of content out for it as a whole. So people are just now like literally getting it to the table and kind of seeing where it goes from that aspect. Just like I'm gonna hopefully do with Primal in the next week. By the way, do you wanna see a Primal unboxing? Unboxing, rambling and ranting? Cause that's what you're gonna get from me. Uh, it's sitting in the garage right now still. Okay, and then we have Roth. Roth is still on there. Roth is still going live over on GameFound at the time of me talking about this. And again, this is probably the most intriguing chip theory game for me as a whole. Again, like I talked about last week, you have the chip theory uh, lovers that are nagging on it, nagging on it because it's not the traditional chip theory game. I love the aesthetic, actually. I love the idea of it. I love the idea of the asymmetry, like a root area control, simpler to get to the play table in the first place. And I won't be lying that this is going to go down to the last minute for me. This is going to go down to the last minute for me as a backer, uh, because, you know, I've said in the past, like, so I'm not banking on a review copy, folks. And I'm going to look at this one and give it a hard, hard look-see. I'm going to watch some of the playthrough and the uh, content here. But I would really, 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 really like a rule book as well. I am one of those people. And then also, we talked about it in the roundup yesterday. <clears throat> I don't know what to make of this. I don't know what to make of this. People are chiming in on the comment section over on the GameFound page as well with Simon's um, pseudo launch, right? Dead Keep on GameFound. But it didn't really launch. It's a pre order, it's a fracking pre order. Like, that's it. It's basically a web shop, and you'll get it in a year, which is really fracking strange to me right i'm going all cylon bsg terminology because i can't do forking from the good place but you know i could do either we'll go with fracking though i feel like more of the fracking mood because what 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 is this folks how many projects or campaigns are they already behind and now we're going to have this we're going to have allegedly god of war as well that i just talked about launching maybe next month is game found just going to be a pre-order shop now are they going to allow other people to just pre-order instead of actually pledge? And again, I guess the question is, right, because some of you, I, I guarantee, are going to go in the comment section down below, right? Chris, it's just semantics. You're pre-ordering anyway. Crowdfunding is a pre-order. Well, it kind of is, but now there's not even any cloak and dagger, right? They're just going with it, which is kind of scary at the same time. Why even use GameFound? Why even use GameFound? Why not just do what you're doing with Cthulhu Dark Providence, the remake of A Study of Emerald, and launch it through your own web shop then? Why even go through the hoop of GameFound in the first place? Do you think GameFound is going to have more of an audience from that sense? At the time of me filming this, I mean, it's live. You can pre-order it. You can add stuff to your cart for $160. You know, a base game with two mini expansions, neither of which are terribly appealing as a whole, but, you know, it doesn't tell you how many people are doing it. Doesn't tell you how many people are in. Doesn't tell me, you know, if they've got one copy being sold, if they've got, you know, uh, 20,000, if they've got 150. And again, that seems weird not to have some transparency there because this is the crowdfunding website. And maybe again, maybe I missed it. Did GameFound announce that they're just going to be a pre-order web shop now for companies? I don't know, but it's just weird to me. It just gives me weird vibes and I don't really like it. Two last things of note, and one of them is going back to earlier in the video because, you know, I'm subscribed to Game Nerds, uh, their email subscription, right, for deals and things like that, and basically to help me know what's also coming out at retail as well. You know, I'm sure you have one or two of those in addition if you're anything like me. But the interesting thing that came into my inbox today was that Game Nerds, not their unboxings, not their what were the best games selling in February, but the fact that they were talking about the previously mentioned Roth in this video, which now at the time of me refilming this 
actually has a rule book out. They just released the rule book on the day of me refilming this. And so now you can check it out because they said that they were waiting and holding off to give you the solo and cooperative modes and rules overhead from that side of things. So now with six days left, maybe almost five at the time you're watching this, you're gonna have a little bit more information. So my last minute decision may be coming a little bit sooner, but where I'm going with this though, was they also had a pre-order game nerds right now campaign not done pre-order available pre-order available for guess what the exact same price as it was on game found through the all-in gameplay of 86 dollars i'm looking at that going you know one i thought the price was higher on game nerds but then i just went over to game found tonight right at the time of me filming this and said oh whoa 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 it is the same price scratching my head there scratching my head there a little bit and this last part goes along with that because the other thing that came into my inbox today somehow i didn't think i was subscribed to them but game steward you all know game steward right crowdfunding big backers as a retail option reselling for a higher price right so that you don't have to buy it in FOMO, they'll buy it and you can pay them more, right? Okay, whatever. But they just said they're opening a CMON exclusive like look into the CMON time machine essentially. And what they're calling it, to be very specific, early access to the CMON retro collection. Now, I don't know if everybody got this or if I got this because I'm subscribed to them somehow, but you can click on it and go over and get all of their Simon stuff. So Simon is offering to them, it appears, it appears all of the Kickstarter exclusive stuff. So this should probably be higher in the video and earlier on. And if you're not watching at this part, you don't know that like literally when I clicked on the link, it pulls up all of the Ankh stuff with all of the Kickstarter exclusive seals, right? And it's all in stock right now. So you missing any of the Kickstarter exclusive stuff from the previous campaigns? And to be clear, this graphic that I'm showing you, right? You know, Marvel United's, Zombie Sides, Hate, Death May Die, Bloodborne, Ankh, more Zombie Sides, Starcadia Quest, Massive Darkness 2. That's a lot of stuff. So that's two in one week where Simon is doing something different. Is this encourageable? I don't really know. I don't really know because again they're giving it to the place that marks it up already and so why not offer it to other people instead i don't know how do you feel about that how do you feel about them apples then last new game up last new game up again just came across it today Boop. in case you're not familiar with the cat abstract game where you you know tic-tac-toe domino three in a row knock each other off trying to get all your big cats instead of your little cats doing the tic-tac-toeing. And this is Boop the Halls, folks. We're getting a Christmas edition. We got Halloween, now we're getting Christmas. It's not even anywhere close to Christmas. But it's actually going to be, as you can see, pyramid tiered. And so you're booping off three of the other person's ornaments or getting your usual wing condition of getting yours in a row. So however you wanna do it on a tiered system now. So is that enough to intrigue you? And the question I didn't really see answered there is can you play the non-tiered edition with the tiered edition? So. If you've been waiting, holding off, buying an abstract boop, go check it out. Otherwise, you know, the, some of the hotness is similar stuff that I talked about last week. Uh, you've got your Dune War for Rockus, which I talked about in the retail video. It's coming to retail formally now. Seventh Citadel, which is delivering the Seventh Continent sequel, which people are liking maybe a little bit better. Uh, the upcoming Osprey remake, Battalion War of the Ancients that I talked about last week. Let's go to Japan, which is also delivering. And then Gloomhaven, Buttons and Bugs, the small mini Gloomhaven from their backer kit campaign is also coming to the hands of, well, backers. And so, again, do you want a mini Gloomhaven? I didn't get it. Do you want it? Do you like it? Yeah, button shy version of Gloomhaven. Sure, fantastic. There you go. And then River Valley Glassworks, again, sort of the Azul Light from All Play that's doing a couple hundred thousand on crowdfunding currently. And the stretch goals just turned into a full fledged expansion if you missed that update as well. So you can check out what else they've got going on in that aspect of things as a light filler, you know, relatively fun game. Apart from that, again, most of the usual stuff Star Wars Crack, uh, Earthborn Rangers, Veiled Fate, Veil of Eternity. 
just a few of the usual suspects. Nothing else uh, tremendously different on the hotness. Super Boss Monster is ranking down there a little bit lower, which also, you know, surprisingly, has a great fan base. You know, that's a totally, I'd like to try it game for me. Uh, it's got about half a million dollars raised on crowdfunding on the roundup yesterday at the time of me doing that one. So, you know, it's doing really well, actually, all things considered. And that's about it. Otherwise, there's not really anything more interesting on the um, hotness at this point. So that's all I got. Otherwise, so yeah, we'll see. Like I said, I talked about some of the stuff that uh, I'll be getting to the table this weekend, hopefully, in the form of some Star Wars Unlimited. So that's about it. You know, otherwise, like I said, I'm going to be playing a bunch of stuff. I want to get my Star Wars crack played. Uh, I'm going to try and sell a couple games. I've had some decent luck this week in selling two or three games to pay for my Star Wars crack. <laughs> I can't stop calling it that. I'm sorry. And then, you know, what else we got going on? Uh, the Bitewing stuff that I talked about. And then AI Apocalypse. We'll be doing the video of at the beginning of the week. Uh, some Mage Knight Ultimate. And we'll kind of see where things go from there. So as I mentioned yesterday, thank you, 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 thank you. Somehow I'm at 10K. So let's see if we can get the next 10K uh, in under three and a half years. <laughs> right? Because that's about how long it took to get here. So anybody, tell your friends, thumb your Board Game Geek blog links down below and just have some fun with it and help me go viral on one of these as your uh, lovable but dorky and, um, you know, yeah, level of YouTube personality. So I guess I'm considered that now, right? Does that officially like five digits worth of subscribers make me a personality? I don't know. I like personality rather than content creator, right? Because that's what you want in your videos, right? That's why I put the outtakes now, at, you know, on the end of some of my videos, because you guys, you got, you want to see I'm a person too. That's why half of you tune in, I think, to watch me and make me feel good about myself, i.e. Uh, laugh at me, make some mistakes, and just laugh at me in general, right? It's fun. It's fun. That's why I do it. So have a great freaking day. Have a great weekend. Get your Star Wars Unlimited, right? Buy your showcases. And one last side note here at the end, scalpers for Star Wars Unlimited need to be fearing because FFG also announced, Asmodee just announced that, um, you know what, they were going to like, you know, space out these waves of content, but because the demand has actually been more overwhelming than they thought, they were prepared for it, but they weren't actually planning on it. And so scalpers are going to get their uh, legs cut out from them here in a couple weeks. And so they're going to have, a, you know, consistent waves coming out. So those prices above MSRP for those boxes are now going to come down. So boom, your boy might buy some more. I don't need any more. I'm going to maybe going to buy some more. Peace out. Competitive compul. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. That's